So good morning, my name's Ken Grobe. I'm with Elmo Electronic Inc. I work in the Embedded Computing Group. Uh, this morning I'd like to speak to you about chassis management inspired by MOSA. So I got one word of the theme, I think, into the presentation and maybe we'll find the other two. So topics for this morning, uh, update on SOSA chassis management, keeping systems healthy. So the things I'd like to cover would be a brief update on chassis management basics for rugged systems, a look forward or look towards requirements and capabilities driven by SOSA, the ecosystem interoperability work that's been ongoing and a test demo that uh, we've been working on, and a look at next steps in innovation from industry and an available MOSA ecosystem hardware. This slide is um, out of a tutorial deck from MIT. And to introduce um, sort of the architecture for chassis management, just wanted to look at a couple of the basics here. So we've got uh, the chassis manager, and in this case, there's two of them shown. And the chassis manager has within it something called a chassis management controller. And interconnecting that is a um, set of a bus that's called the IPME bus. And then below it, we show payload cards, in this case, VPX modules, as they're called in VPX, that have IPMCs on them. So this is the basic infrastructure that we, that we have. And over here, in this example, there's a fan tray that also has an IPMC on it. At the top of this, we have a system manager. And that's all in, interconnected with this set of connections that typically are Ethernet. So today what I want to focus on is mainly the chassis manager and the IPMCs. So to sort of get the basics down relative to the pieces that we talk about with respect to chassis manager, a chassis manager interfaces to and controls resources in the chassis, such as fans, power supplies, and plug-in cards. And the plug-in card term is the term that we use in, in SOSA. Plug-in carrier cards can support IPMB via intelligent platform um, management controllers. So in looking at this, this card is a carrier, and on that card it can have an IPMC, it's an in, uh, intelligent platform management controller. And if we just look at this sort of brief diagram here, we can see three I, IPMCs and a 46.11 chassis manager, and then above that we see the system manager interface. One would say, what, what does a chassis manager do? What, what, what's it about? A chassis manager's primary function is to discover all the frues in the chassis, monitor the sensors for each fru, report or repair any abnormal or failed sensors, and then as an example of that, report fan failures or filters, clog filters, adjust the fan speed for over under temperature conditions, report or shut down due to over under voltage and current conditions. So this diagram here is showing sort of the states that take place during the discovery process where you, you would see, have a state of normal operation and then you have a state of abnormal conditions and then what happens when the, you're going through a repair cycle to repair that. <clears throat> Next up is when you look at things that we can interface to, um, as Jerry had pointed out yesterday, we have power supplies that are now intelligent. So this intelligence has been being worked on for some time now and being discussed in the SOSA working groups. And this intelligence capability introduces VDIS 46.11 to the power supply module. So here the power supply module now can report and it can also be controlled. Power supplies can accept commands and the way that this is being implemented is a board or a smart module is being added inside the power supply um, to enable this function. So the power supply now interfaces via the Intelligent Platform Interface Bus or IPMB. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. So, where we got we a couple of rules that are important. Chassis manager rules across SOSA. So these, these are right out of the specification. So SOSA snapshot two 
which is where we're at, requires a chassis manager to be compliant to Vita 46.11, tier two, as well as host tier two. So these are the rules, I won't read them, that you can see what they say. But what it's implying is that, or requiring, is that 46.11 will be adopted um, in the tier two, uh, let's say, capability. And it's being adopted by SOSA, and it's also specified by host. So we hear these terms, tier one and tier two, and you, you would say to yourself, what does that mean? Um, how does that affect the chassis management solution? So this little upside down triangle comes out of um, the MIT tutorial. And I want to thank Greg Rocco for putting all this great stuff together over the years. Um, so this um, diagram shows that in tier one, you have the simplest implementation, and in tier two, you have the highest functionality. So what SOS is requiring, SOSA, host CMOS, is the tier two capability. And one of the things the tier two capability does, it's interesting, you have the minimum capabilities here, and you have the, of tier one, and then the minimum capabilities of tier two. Tier two includes the functionality of tier, tier one. So minimum capabilities of tier two, it supports discovery of each shrill in the chassis, be it a plug-in module, or in this case, because we're, in, let's say, talking about SOS, it would be called a plug-in card. And it basically is allowing, allowing you to discover all the frues that would be in the box. So two more terms, IPMI and IPMB. We hear these, what is IPMI versus IPM, what is IPMB versus IPMI? The IPMB is an enhanced I squared C bus, and the IPMI is essentially the messaging protocol that communicates across the IPMB. And the basic components of this are the BMC, baseboard management controller, the IPMB, and the IPMC, intelligent platform controller. So, where do we find this stuff? So if you take a look at a topology diagram for a backplane, you say to yourself, where is the chassis manager? Is it on the wall, in a slot, or on a switch? And where is it located? The location of the chassis manager, as the specifications have evolved, allow it to no longer be in, say, slot one or the system controller slot. And down here you have IPMB shown as dual buses, IPMB A and IPMB B. And here we're focused on the IPMB bus down here in the utility connector. And this is where um, the default would be IP, IMPB, IMP, IPMB A, excuse me. And <laughs> IPMB B is available um, but it does not always have to be used, and in a redundant application, it would be. Moving on to what's happening in the ecosystem. The ecosystem's working on ways to test what's being specified first, and then uh, has hardware created by industry participants. We're looking for ways to plug those solutions together and to check them out. So to prove out the SOSA host Vita specifications, five vendors the, this year agreed to participate in a live demo working with Elma to um, do some interoperability testing. And the vendors contributed hardware engineers and time to support the demo. And the vendors that we've worked with this year include Elma providing a CMOS SOSA backplane and a chassis manager, Elma providing an IPMC carrier, concurrent excuse me, concurrent technologies providing a single board computer, Bellman Electronics providing smart Vita 62 power supplies, and a company you may not have heard of yet called Crossfield Technologies providing a new USA developed IPMC. So this is a chassis in a lab, obviously. It's got all kinds of good cables laying around it and multimeter, not very fancy. Um, but it's showing you cards plugged into the reference backplane. Here's the power supply on this end. And then we have that carrier card here in the middle. And then we have a processor in conduction cooled format here. And in this case, this is the chassis manager. So the objective is to use the current SOSA and host standards to prove plug-in cards built to those standards. 
Vita 4611 Tier 2 was a requirement, or is a requirement, and host alignment was a requirement. The goal was to show interoperability of plug-in cards with chassis management components, and the participants are, as you can see. So breaking it down a little bit more, we had uh, put together a 3U VPX chassis management demo. We've done this before with 6U VPX cards working with other industry uh, participants, and in this case, we had single board computer from Concurrent running a GUI that shows the boards as icons when you fire it up, and it's run running Windows, and one of the things it's supposed to do is scan and identify all the plug-in cards. Next, we had an IPC, IPMC test card. It's air-cooled, and this looks like a payload card to the chassis manager. Next, we had the chassis manager, and this is the current chassis manager that's meeting the um, requirements and specifications of Vita 46.11 Tier 2. And then ultimately, um, a legacy power supply that has intelligence from Bellman um, that has the capability to sit on the IPBM B, A, and B buses. Looking at the results of that, we're able to communicate with those cards. And we have code developed from multiple suppliers that are basically it's unique. We've got code from concurrent technologies, we've got code from Elma, and we have code from uh, the power supply company, Bellman. And in this, this allows us to test different implementations of the code um, against the specification and see what results we got. And so far, the re results have been good. So what's next? Further innovation. Um, as, it, as we move into 2020, um, the specification for system management, which will come um, as we go into snapshot three and then towards release one, will be, continue to be innovated. And then as yesterday, Jerry mentioned, Vita 62 standardized IP, IPMI messages for power supplies will also be worked on. So where is innovation occurring in the industry? Innovation, um, let's see, innovation here with an industry uh, SBIR called Crossfield, where they have developed an IPMC solution under contract from Navair. Uh, the Crossfield IPMC is easily modifiable. It's configured via a, a tool called an IPMC generator, and it, be, it can be con configured and reconfigured very rapidly and then loaded into an FPGA. This is allows well quick personalization of the controller and the chassis manager solution being adopted to different environments. Initial implementations been done with a smart fusion FPGA. So aligning with SOSA goals, um, one of the things that SOSA is looking for is rapid insertion, rapid deployment, flexibility, and reconfiguration. The Crossfield solution is interesting because in exploring next steps, it gives a method for reconfiguration of VMX, VBX plugin cards via IPMC, and it allows the system manager to reconfigure a plugin card to fit different mission requirements. This feature is important to uh, reduce cost and to support rapid deployment. So what's available in the industry? And wrapping this up, SOSA and host chassis managers, meaning Vitas 46.11 Tier 1 and Tier 2, are available. 3U VPX IPMC test card is also in existence. Um, I would say that this is an ecosystem uh, effort and that there's obviously other technology that's available from folks in this room that would be developed by them in their own organizations that would also support um, similar things. So further, uh, let's say, in this case, the conduction cooled chassis manager card from Elma um, is also in existence, and this allows a conduction cooled context of the chassis manager. Then we had the intelligent uh, Vita 62 power supplies, 3U uh, from Elma, single board computers. In this case, we used um, a concurrent technologies board, but there's also the compute intensive and IO intensive profiles from concurrent and from Contron and others that are being developed. And lastly, the Crossfield IPMC solution is available in chip form or in source code. So that's all I have. Uh, I hope this 
gave you a little bit of an understanding about uh, chassis management concepts and was useful for you today. Thank you.